Hello fellow quilters, I'm Linda Nitson with Sizzix today showing you the crazy quilt block, which is so much fun. Uh, it takes a pack of 10 inch squares. Doesn't matter what pack you choose, you're gonna have great effect from this. So what we need is our crazy quilt die. It does require the use of the Big Shot Pro machine. It doesn't matter if you have the Pro with the craft tray, which is the 12 inch tray, or the extended tray, which is more of the quilter's edition. Um, either one will work because it is um, on the, the square -er platform. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started today. This is super fun and it's great, um, easy cutting. So let's show you how that goes. You wanna take a pack of fabric. In this case, I have the Hoffman Valley Fabric uh, Batiks, which is super, super rich in color. So we wanna take eight of them because you can cut eight at a time. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, when I'm using this, I don't fiddle faddle with what I have in the pack because I know the whole pack is gonna match. The trick is you really don't want two of the same fabrics together. So when you're counting them out, just make sure that you don't have the exact same one sitting next to each other. Okay, we wanna lay these eight on top of the die and you just wanna make sure that your pieces cover the exterior of the shape. So just be careful of that on all sides. So you're gonna get close on two of the sides, just be wary of that. Okay, so when you get that settled, take it to your machine, lay it in the tray, place your cutting pad on the top, and give it a couple of quick turns. Very important to slide that cutting pad off. You could experience some static cling. It was so simple, so we're gonna remove the edges here and that's the little bit of waste that you're gonna get off of that 10 inch stack of fabric. Okay, now here's where the fun begins because all you have to do is take each one of these stacks and reposition it. So we're gonna start with this one being the first one. So if I open these pieces up a little bit, this is a little bit of waste too. We're gonna, throw, I'm gonna pull them apart so that you can see them a little bit better. What you're gonna do is choose a number one piece. So in this case, we're gonna use this one as our number one piece. We're gonna leave it alone. The number two piece, we are going to remove the top one and put it on the bottom. Easy enough, right? And we're going to circle all the way around. So the next piece, we're going to take two off of the top and remove them to the bottom and lay them out exactly the way you picked them up. The next one you will take three off of the top. Notice that it's the one just past the one I left off on. Put that one on the bottom. Lay that back down. So now we get four off the top. And you're going to continue this method all the way around your pieces. And now we have a variety of different prints that for each eight layers that we've cut out, each square, when it's completed, is going to look completely different. Each placement of color will be slightly different in every block. So when you sew them all together, you have the ability to see the variety. All of the quilt will match because it came out of the same fabric selection, but you don't get two in the same exact placement at any given time. Okay, so now how do we get started? Well. Let's start with the three bigger pieces on the top. So we're gonna take this one to this one and we're gonna sew this seam together. So let's lay them right sides together. Be very careful you only take the top two, or the top one of each. Now on this one, because it's triangular, you wanna measure out and have the same equal space between, so you've got the tails here on the edge, okay? And we're gonna sew those together. If you need to put pins in, put your pins in. And be careful because when we cut our pieces now, 
every piece that you're sewing together now is going to be on the bias. So be very careful when you're sewing. Don't stretch these pieces to try and get them to fit one to the other. You will have um, an overlay at the end where that little um, triangular piece stuck out. You will need that. Okay. Now we're going to open that up and we're going to get the next piece, which is this piece here. And we're going to pull that right off the top. And it gets pieced right here. And you're going to roll that over. Lay it right sides together. Now on the batiks, seeing your right and your wrong side can be difficult because of course they're exactly the same. Finish is slightly different, but usually most people can't tell the difference. So be very careful not to turn these pieces and overhandle them, or you're going to get them all mixed up. So just give that your quarter inch seam. And I say quarter inch, it's really a scant quarter of an inch. Be true to your quarter inch seams. All right, needle up. That a snip. Now we're going to lay that in one selection. We're going to come back to this. We're going to sew the next five pieces together. So the next will be these here together. Don't be confused seeing the two colors uh, on showing because we've already used these, remember, so we're in, still in good shape. So we want to take these two and roll them over and sew them together. And again, the one edge lines up perfectly and the other has the dog ear here. You're going to see that triangle hanging out the edge. That's perfect. You just have to be careful not to mix up your pieces any. And you're just going to go in order. So we have that one. Open it up. Take the next one over. Again, make sure you only take the top one. And you want a slight overlap on this side. So that when your seam comes in here, it's going to be a quarter of an inch here. And then same, if I turn that over, you can see it a little bit better. I'll have a quarter of an inch from the edge of that triangle piece. And I hold my threads when I get started just so that thread doesn't get all jumbled up on the back side and become ugly. And then we have one more on the end here. And that fits right into here. Again, lay it right sides together. And the same thing you're going to have that hangover here of the triangle piece on each end. Now this of course goes much quicker once you get the hang of it and you're not talking your way through it, but the effect is truly awesome. And this is a good place to use the fancy stitches that your sewing machine came with that we don't often use. Okay, now this is the last piece that goes on the end here and I would finger press these and I would press them open actually. Just give it a little press before I place that last one on here. And once again, you're going to have some overlap on each side. And on this end also. Be careful not to stretch that, but you should have a little bit of a triangle tail down here at the end. Now this one, <clears throat> because you've got three seams sewing on that one, if you felt more comfortable dropping a pin in there, feel free. And continue sewing all the way through. Okay, now this is the second half to the block, if you can see that with all the threads hanging out in the way there. And we finger pressed these. We didn't get this one open, but we're going to give that a little pressing. And a finger press should hold it open. And then we're going to do the same to this one too. Give it a little press. Then you're going to lay your edges here, right sides together. And again, you're going to have a bit of overlap on the corner here. And because of the span, I am going to drop a couple of pins in here. Just to keep it so we don't get any stretching going on. 
So just drop a pin there. And then I want to make sure that my edge matches up here. And I'm going to drop a pin in there. Again, very important to keep your edges lined up perfectly. And then I'm going to drop another pin in here in the middle. And then over here where we've got some of the seams coming together. And we'll just put one more pin in here. Doesn't matter exactly where you pin, just secure those pieces together so that they don't want to wobble around for you. So I've just put four pins in. You could put two more in if you really enjoyed pinning or have trouble with the fabric slipping. So let's go ahead and give that one final stitch down the kind of center down the block. But it's going to secure the first half that we worked on to the second half. Be careful that your seams, we've taken the time to finger press them open, make sure that they do stay in that same direction. And you can feel those seams when you're going over them, if they're facing the wrong direction or not, you can tell. Now this is where it starts getting fun because you have now completed your first block. So on this one, if you wanted to, to uh, lay the seam open, you could, or you could just simply lay it to the one direction. It won't matter at this point. Same with this final seam. You can either lay it open or you can uh, lay it to one side. At this point, it won't matter. The bulk really isn't in these two seams. So when we lay it back across, look what you get. Now that's super fun. So when you start laying a couple of them together, when we press these, they will match to be the exact same size. So you can make a multitude together. You can put sashing in between if you choose to. You can put fancy stitches, decorative stitches over the top of the seams to give it that extra oomph. It doesn't matter if you use metallic threads or flat uh, matte finish threads. Um, be creative and enjoy the new crazy quilt block. Happy quilting!